everybody, I thought I'd make a little video for you going over these practice problems so you can prepare for your test for Unit 5. Okay, so let's get started. So blah, 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 blah. So it gives us the enthalpy of combustion of methanol. There it is. So it says using table from information from table 11, determine the theoretical enthalpy of combustion of methanol. So once it tells us to use table 11, that tells us that we are going to use bond enthalpies. So the equation we use to do this is that delta H standard for this reaction. It is combustion, so you could also write it as that if you wanted to, but that's all right. RxN just means reaction. It's going to be the sum of all the bonds broken minus the sum of all the bonds formed. So it will help you to draw the structures of these compounds if you want to determine the bonds that are going to be broken and formed. But you don't really have to if you can visualize it. So I have my answers and stuff here, so I'll just kind of pause for that. So what I'm going to do is first determine the number of bonds, and then we'll just show you what the answer is. So I've got methanol here. I'm going to have carbon bonded to three, or three hydrogens. That means I have three carbon hydrogen bonds so that I'm going to add the carbon that will be bonded to the oxygen so one carbon oxygen bond and the oxygen that will be bonded to the hydrogen and the hydroxyl group so that covers my methanol now I'm going to have one and a half moles of O2 so to that I'm going to add 1.5 times the bond enthalpy for the oxygen molecule all right so that's all my reactants so now let's look at our products. I have one mole of CO2. That's going to give us two moles of carbon oxygen double bonds. And to that I have to add four times the bond enthalpy of oxygen hydrogen for the two moles of water. So when I plug in the values, there they are. You should get an answer of negative 650 kilojoules per mole. All right, let's move on to the next problem. This looks like an experimental determination here. So we're going to determine the enthalpy of combustion experimentally. So we took a burner containing methanol. There's that. It was weighed and used to heat water in a test tube. So we're going to make a little, we're going to burn it. And we're going to assume that the flame goes into the test tube. So the data I'm given here is the mass of the burner before and after. So the difference in mass will give us the mass of the methanol. We're given a mass of the water in the test tube and an initial and final temperature of water in the test tube. For the first thing it wants us to do is calculate the amount in moles of methanol that was burned. So the difference between before burning and after burning should represent the mass of the methanol burned. So if I take 80.557 and subtract it from 80.034, that gives me, let's go ahead and do that. eighty point five five seven minus eighty point zero three four that gives me zero point five four three grams and I'm going to convert to moles by dividing by the molar mass of methanol which is thirty two point zero five grams for every one mole and that gives us zero point zero one six three moles of methanol. So going back to unit one there. It then says calculate the heat absorbed in kilojoules by the water. So we're going to use Q equals MC delta T here. We'll know we're using Q equals MC delta T because we're given change in temperature data. So when I plug the mass of water in, note that the mass here is in grams, but I want my answer in kilojoules. That means I have to plug my um, unit of mass in as kilograms. Now you can either plug it in as kilograms or just convert at the end by dividing by 1000. I'm going to plug it in in kilograms. So I'm going to have 0 0.020000 kilograms times the specific heat of water times the temperature change, which is 26.4 minus 21.5 degrees Celsius. So when you do that, you're going to get 0 0.410 kilojoules. I write it out in scientific notation, so 4.10 times 10 to the minus first. All right, there's our first page. Now it wants us to determine the enthalpy change for the combustion of methanol for one mole of methanol. So we know that to calculate delta H, 
we're going to need the negative Q value and divide by the number of moles of methanol that we had. So we calculated Q in step two. We found that it was 0.41 kilojoules, and we determined that we had 0.0163 moles. So when we plug that into our equation, we should get the answer, which is negative 25.2 kilojoules per mole. All right, and it says the data booklet value for the enthalpy of combustion is negative 726. Suggest why this differs from the values calculated in parts A and B. So now we got to know about our discrepancies. So in part A, we use bond enthalpy. Now we know that these values are averages of a bunch of different compounds that contain those bonds. So they're not particularly too accurate. That's what you want to say for part A. For part B, we're doing an experimental calculation, so we have to think about the assumptions that we make there. So the experimental value is negative 726, and we calculated negative 25.2. That tells me that a lot, a lot, a lot of heat was lost to the surroundings during this experiment. And it makes sense because we're assuming that all of the heat of that flame is going into the test tube. But you could put your hands around the flame and feel the heat and, the, and feel the fact that it's actually going off in all directions. And not all of the heat is going into that test tube. In fact, most of the heat is not going into the test tube. All right, next. Outline why the value for the standard enthalpy change of formation of hydrogen is zero, remember? that the standard enthalpy change of elements will always be zero because elements are not formed in chemical processes. They are formed in nuclear processes. Hydrogen, specifically, was formed all, very shortly after the Big Bang. All the hydrogen in the universe is billions and billions and billions of years old. Plus, enthalpy change of formation, specifically, is the enthalpy change that occurs when, one, when elements combine to form one mole of a compound. So only compounds will have enthalpies of formation. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate the standard enthalpy change of hydrogenation of propene. So I know that hydrogenation of propene, we're going to start with propene. We're going to add hydrogen to it in the presence of a nickel catalyst to form propane. Now the values given to me here in this table are enthalpy of formation data. So whenever we're using enthalpy of formation, Delta H is going to be calculated uh, by taking the sum of all the delta H values of the products and subtract away the sum of all the delta H values of the reactants. So I got to turn to my table given to me here. So our product is propane. There it is. Its delta H value is negative 104. So we're going to subtract away the sum of the delta H's of the products. So for propene, it's 20.4. And of course, for hydrogen, it's 0, so plus 0. And when we punch in the numbers, that's going ahead and that's going to go and equal. Let me get all my stuff together here. Negative 124 kilojoules per mole. All right. You can see when I made my key, I accidentally flipped it. So I'm just going to perform these calculations. Next, it wants us to do the same thing for standard entropy change. So I have my column here for entropy, so I'm going to use that. Again, whenever we're using formation data, it's products minus reactants. So delta S in this example is going to be the delta S value for propane, which is 270, minus the sum of the delta S values for the reactants, so 267 plus 131, and when we punch those numbers into our calculator, 270 minus 267 plus 131, I don't even need parentheses there, but that's okay, it gives us an entropy value of 128 joules per mole Kelvin. Then it says determine delta G. Well, we just calculated delta S and delta H. Don't forget this equation for calculating delta G is in the data booklet right in section 1. Huzzah! Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So my delta H value is negative 124 minus the temperature, which we're told is 298 Kelvin. Remember, the temperature always has to be in Kelvin. 
times our delta S value. But remember, delta H has a unit of kilojoules, the temperature is in Kelvin. So we have to make sure that the unit of temperature that we're working with is Kelvin and the unit of energy we're working with is kilojoules. So we have to divide that delta S value by 1,000. So it becomes 0.128. And we're ready to solve. So negative 124 minus 298 times negative 0.128. Presto changeo, I get negative 85.9 kilojoules per mole. You can see here the math is not really the problem. The math is actually pretty easy. The thing that is going to be the trip is going to be tripping you up is remembering which tool we're going to use for which situation. All right. Finally, at 298 Kelvin, the hydrogenation of propene is a spontaneous process. Determine the temperature above which propane will spontaneously decompose into propene and hydrogen. So this is nice that it says it's a spontaneous reaction. We know that because delta G is negative, that tells us it's spontaneous, super. Now, because negative delta G is spontaneous and positive delta G is non-spontaneous, then when you switch over from spontaneous to non-spontaneous, that means delta G is going to be zero. So if we set delta G equal to, equal to zero in this equation, then when we solve for the temperature, we'll be solving for the temperature at which it switches from spontaneous to non-spontaneous. So when we rearrange, temperature is going to be equal to delta H over delta S. So we just plug in the numbers, negative 124 divided by negative 0.128. Presto changeo, I get 969. Kelvin. Okay, moving right along. Get out of there. All right, next. Two students were asked to use information from the data booklet to calculate a value for the enthalpy of hydrogenation of ethene to form ethane. So John used bond enthalpy. Merritt used enthalpy of combustion from table 13. So first thing we want to do is calculate the value for the enthalpy of hydrogenation of ethene obtained using average bond enthalpies in table 11. So again, average bond enthalpy tells us we're going to use uh, bonds broken minus bonds formed. And I'm just going to show you this because how many of these can we do? So I know that in ethene, I'm going to have a single carbon-carbon double bond and four carbon-hydrogen single bonds. Don't forget about the hydrogen, one mole of H2. There are our bonds broken. And then in ethane, we're going to have one carbon-carbon single bonds between the two carbons and six carbon-hydrogen hydrogen single bonds. So when we substitute in from the data booklet, we get negative 124 for the enthalpy change of that reaction. All right, now next, determine the value for the enthalpy change of hydrogenation using the values for the enthalpies of combustion. All right, so enthalpies of combustion are in table 13. Whenever we're using table 13, it's going to be an energy cycle. So I have C2H4 plus H2 making C2H6. When I combust ethane, I make carbon dioxide and water if it's full combustion complete when I combust hydrogen I make H2O if I combust uh, ethane I make carbon dioxide and water so here are here's our cycle now this right here represents the enthalpy of hydrogenation that we want to calculate so we're going to travel around the cycle from the back of the arrow to the front of the arrow adding the values of the arrows that we're going with and subtracting the, the value of the arrows we're going against so let's go ahead and open table 13. So hydrogen has an enthalpy of combustion of negative 286. Ethane, where are you, ethane? Ethane has an enthalpy of combustion of negative 1561. And Oh, that was actually ethene, my bad. Ethene is negative 1411. And ethane is negative 1561. All right, now that we have values for our arrows, we just have to travel around the cycle. So I'm going to, uh, the first arrow I encounter has a value of negative 1411. 
To that, I'm going to add the next arrow I encounter, which has a value of negative 286. And then I'm going to subtract the next arrow because we're going against it. So I'm going to subtract negative 1561. When I punch in the numbers, negative 1411 minus 286 plus 1561. Presto change, I get negative 136 kilojoules per mole. Again, none of the math is really that challenging. It's just a matter of determining which method you're going to use. All right, so suggest one reason why John's answer is slightly less accurate than Merritt's and calculate the percentage difference. So John used bond enthalpies. Right? So again, we know that bond enthalpies are average values, so they are not going to be very accurate necessarily. Now for the percent difference, we just have to get the difference in their answers. So. John got 124, Merrick got 136. If I divide that by 136, multiply by 100. This is a lot like percent error, right? 136, 136 minus 124 divided by 136 times 100. I get, where'd I go wrong there? I get 4.4%. Now you could also divide by 124. Um, uh, you'll get a slightly different value. I think it's like 8.2% or something like that. But the data booklet ex or the um, mark scheme accepts, accepts both. Sorry. All right, John decided to determine the enthalpy of hydrogenation of cyclohexene to produce cyclohexane. Use average bond enthalpies to deduce a value for the enthalpy of hydrogenation of cyclohexene. So I'm going to actually draw this structure for you. So cyclohexene is an alkane with a six-membered ring. The ene tells us it's going to have one double bond. So wherever there's a double bond, we're going to have one hydrogen. And wherever there is a single bond, there's going to be two hydrogens. I would say the toughest part of this problem and the reason why they give you two bond enthalpy problems and one overall problem is for the structure of this compound. So when we're calculating delta H for the bonds broken, I'm going to have one carbon-carbon double bond, five carbon-carbon single bonds, and ten carbon-hydrogen bonds. Don't forget about your hydrogen-hydrogen. And then I'm going to subtract away uh, the bonds formed. So it's going to be six carbon-carbon single bonds in cyclohexane plus 12 carbon-hydrogen bonds. So when I plug all of the values in, I get negative 124 kilojoules per mole. So this is just the value for the carbon-carbon double bond, five times 346 for the carbon-carbon single bond, and so forth. Again, if it helps, draw the structures first, and drawing the structures will help you to determine how many bonds actually get broken. Finally, the percentage difference between these two methods is greater for cyclohexene than it was for ethene. John's hypothesis was that it would be the same. Right? Why are average bond enthalpies less accurate for cyclohexene shown above than it was for ethene? So one more thing to remember about average bond enthalpy in the ethene equation, everything was gaseous. In order to do bond enthalpy, all of the reactants and products should be in the gas phase. And the definition of average bond enthalpy is the energy required to break a bond in the gas phase. But if we look at the cyclohexene reaction, we have liquid and liquid. So when it asks us what information we would need to provide a more accurate answer, I would say uh, the um, bond enthalpy for the bonds specifically in the gaseous versions of cyclohexane and cyclohexene. Last page. Ooh, finally, a Hess's Law problem. So here we have our series of equations, and here we have the overall equation. So I like to go ahead and label my equations a, b, and c, and then set up a little equation in terms of a, b, and c just to make it easier. So our first reactant is ethane. I find ethane in reaction A. It's on the correct side of the arrow, but I have twice as many moles as I should. So I'm going to take the value for A and multiply it by 1 half. The next thing I see in the equation is ethene. Ethene is in reaction C. The coefficient matches, but it's on the wrong side. So I'm going to take the negative value of C and add that to 1 half A. 
Finally, I have hydrogen. I see hydrogen up there in reaction B. Uh, the coefficient does not match. There's twice as much as I should have, so I'm going to multiply B by 1 half. And it's also on the wrong side, so I'm going to have to negate whatever B is. Now that I've got my little equation, I can just plug in the numbers. So I'm going to take 1 half and multiply it by A, which is negative 3120. To that, I'm going to add the negative value of C. Well, C is negative 1411, so it's just going to be plus 1411. And then finally, I'm going to cut in half and take and, and negate the value of B. So I'm going to have plus 1 half times positive 572. And when I punch all those numbers into my calculator, I get positive 137 kilojoules per mole. And this actually makes sense because this is just the hydrogenation of ethane, or ethene, excuse me. And if we look at the previous page, we see that the hydrogenation of ethene is an exothermic process, so the reverse should be endothermic. Now, of course, these two methods give you a slightly different value because of the discrepancies and assumptions we have to make in these processes. Finally, last problem a Born-Haber cycle. So it tells us the magnitudes for each of the enthalpy changes are given in kilojoules per mole, but their signs have been omitted. So state the names for the enthalpy changes labeled C and D. So in order to determine what enthalpy change we have, we have to look and see what we've got going on. So right up here I have Br2. That indicates bromine molecules. After the arrow, I have individual bromine atoms. So that represents the breaking of those bromine-bromine bonds. So change C, we call bond enthalpy. And for D, here we're going from a bromide, bromine atoms into bromide ions. They're anions. So D is the addition of electrons, which we call electron affinity, or at least the energy associated with that process. Then deduce which two of the enthalpy changes have negative signs. So going from solid to gas is positive. Going from a potassium atom, potassium ion, ionization energy is positive. Bond enthalpy is positive. Now, electron affinity, at least for the first electron, is the negative change. And our lattice enthalpy here is negative. Because lattice enthalpy is usually written with the arrow originating at the solid compound and then going to the gaseous ions. That is a positive change. So the arrow going in the opposite way is a negative change. So D and E are our negatives. And finally, we want to determine the value for the enthalpy of formation of potassium bromide. So I want to calculate this arrow here. So I'm going to travel around the cycle, adding all the values together. So the first thing I'm going to, the first arrow I encounter is 90. So I'm going to take 90, add it to the next one I encounter, which is 418. Add to the next one I encounter, which is 112. To the next one I encounter, which is negative 342. And then finally to the last one I encounter, which is plus negative 670. And when we set up these Born-Haber cycles in class, um, we, um, Always had our lattice enthalpy arrow going the other way, so we were subtracting away the lattice enthalpy, which is exactly what we're doing here anyhow. And when we do that, I get an answer of, I don't have an answer done so far, so I'll just punch it into the calculator. It's going to be 90 plus 418 plus 112 minus 342 minus 670 gives me negative 392 kilojoules per mole. And finally, explain why the quantitative value for lattice enthalpy of calcium bromide is larger than the value for potassium bromide. Well, calcium and potassium are in the same row. They're in the same period of the periodic table, which means they have the same amount of shielding. But calcium has a greater charge than potassium. And the more charged an ion is, the greater attraction it will have to that negative ion that it's attached to. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. Sorry if I made you dizzy with all the moving around, but um, best of luck on your test. Have a super winter break, and I will see you all in 2020.